honoring those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. My Gold Star. Dear Sophie, I am here in the Korngal Valley in Afghanistan. It's very pretty with lots of green trees and big rocks. A letter home from a soldier serving in Afghanistan. Getting to go to faraway places and experience their culture. And he got to do his job, his job that he loved. A job that Annie Cox knew was very dangerous. My jar job is hard to explain. It takes me far away. And I don't like that. But Daddy is doing a job that almost no one else in America does, protecting America. Nathan's mission, clearing improvised explosive devices from roads, serving his country, protecting other soldiers. And he understood why it was so important to him and looked to her army family for support. I was okay with it. You know, I made friends right away. I um, surrounded myself with other good women that were in the same situation as I, I was. And um, we all leaned on each other's shoulders. It was that support group she was with on the day that everything changed. Her friend's husband was in charge of setting up the casualty notification team. It was Sophie's first soccer game of the season. Her husband Pete was standing right there and he got a phone call. Not knowing I was standing right there talking to his wife because he took the phone call and went way out in the field. We left. We went to a birthday party. I remember after the party I said to Sophie, I just don't feel like going home. We went and grocery shopped, I stopped and visited with the neighbors, pulled in my drive, unloaded groceries, was cooking supper and I seen the first green suit walk by. My neighbor Candace grabbed Sophie and took her over to our other neighbors and then I opened the door and they asked if I was Annette Dawn Cox. Um, wife of Staff Sergeant Nathan Cox. And I said yes. And um, I remember looking at Chaplain Pearson and, and saying, I don't think I want to know what, I don't want to hear what you're going to say. And he said, Annie, please, we have to do this. After calling Nathan's family and connecting with her Army network, Annie did her best to prepare herself for the most difficult conversation of her life, telling her young daughter Sophie, just five years old, that daddy wasn't coming home. I just said, Sophie, I need to talk to you. Do you remember what happened to Chloe? Chloe was our dog we put to sleep two weeks before um, Nathan left. And she said, yeah, dad told me she went up to heaven to see God. And I said, yeah, that's where your dad's at. And she just said, you mean my dad's not coming home? And I said, no. And she said, he's in heaven with Chloe. And I said, yes. And she cried, she was only five, but she understood. Sophie will always have something from him with her in a DVD made by the USO of him reading a book that he chose just for her. Hi, Soph. Hey, I'm gonna read you Mike Mulligan and his steam show. And in the words he wrote for her in this letter. And oh yeah, try not to be grumpy in the morning. Lots of love, hugs and kisses, daddy. And Annie would soon find out he left something behind for her too, his journal. For someone who's deployed and he's in the infantry and he's a soldier and he's supposed to be all big and bad and gruff, and he wrote of the, the beauty of the land. You see him, you feel him when you read that journal, I assume, yeah. for you as well. Oh yeah, yeah. It's as, when I read it, it's as though He's sitting there talking to me about where he was at. A reminder of who he was, as she asked all of us to remember all the Gold Star families. Don't forget about our, our Gold Star families. It's, uh, they, we, call, we call it the Gold Star family, it's member, but it's a membership no one wants to be a part of. It as a way to honor all of them, Annie is preparing for a trip to Washington, D.C. on an honor flight and the date of that trip will make the tribute even more emotional. It's gonna be a great honor to go out there. And it will be four years to the day that Nate was killed 
when we leave on the honor flight. Well, Veterans Day is coming Sunday, a chance for all of us to give special thanks to the men and women who serve. And to their families who often sacrifice so much as well. Tonight, a special tribute to the Gold Star families who have given the ultimate sacrifice for all of us. The pride, pain, and privilege that comes with my Gold Star. When Brad was born, I remember holding him in the delivery room and he had these great big blue eyes and he truly looked at me as if, well, let's get going. I have things to do. And Bradley Courthouse never slowed down. Once on his feet, it was one adventure after another. He rode a bike without training wheels. Uh, then he went right to the big wheels and then the four wheelers and the big trucks and football and soccer. And he was, he had a lot of energy, a big smile, and the teachers called me all the time. Maybe at times too outgoing, too social, a fun-loving young man who loved life. He would soon live his dream of following in his father's footsteps and become a Marine. It was a job that fit his personality, but a job that was full of danger, and Marilyn felt that danger too. I had had a premonition for about 24 hours that something was wrong. And it started on Sunday afternoon. I, I just kept crying and felt sick. And Monday was no better. And Monday night, about 8.15, the doorbell rang. And I knew it would be the Marines. Her son, the first Iowa Marine killed in action in Iraq. After weeks of constant visits by thousands of people, Marilyn knew the healing would have to come from within. And I just kept asking God to please help me to understand, you know, why this had to take place. And uh, with prayer and trust and faith, not that I will ever understand totally, but God had a mission for Brad and he has a mission for me. As she grieved the loss of her son, her husband passed away too, making it even more important that she find a mission of her own. It is a blessing when you can tell your story, whether standing up in front of people is your forte or not, but it helps you heal. First talking to small groups, then large groups, sharing her story, helping others through churches, through community support groups, and now through those facing their final days. I'm doing hospice, and uh, it's been very fulfilling. And if I can just help that person face the end of their day uh, with a positive outlook and their families as well, then I've done something good. Knowing that these images, the memories on these walls, give her the strength to touch others as only a gold star mom can do. Now he's in heaven and I cry because I miss him, but I'm glad he's there. For the past couple of nights, we've introduced you to a couple of Gold Star families here in the QCA. Tonight, as we salute all of our veterans, we take you on an emotional and inspiring journey. As veterans of World War II and Korea are joined with those who have given the ultimate sacrifice, taking my Gold Star on an honor flight. The veterans arrive at the airport for what will be one of the most incredible days of their lives. This honor flight is like no other. Many of the invited guardians who are here to help the veterans are Gold Star families who have lost a family member in service to our country. For Annie Cox, who lost her husband Nathan, this day has added significance. It's a beautiful day. We have all these wonderful vets with us. I think it's going to be a great day out there. Very honorable. A lot must be going through your mind today. Yes. Yes, there's a lot going through our mind. Today is the four year anniversary of Nate's death. And it's the 20th flight on the 20th. And uh, yeah, a lot of emotions. Can you tell me about your veteran? Well, this is Earl. Yeah. And he's a World War II vet. And he's from Peoria. And we're looking forward to spending the day together, going to all the memorials. Marilyn lost her son, Bradley. This is Ted, and he is just an awesome guy. I think we're going to be best friends by the end of the day. He may be really sick of me, but I don't think I'll be sick of him. 
What are you most looking forward to today? Um, I've been to Washington, D.C., and it's an awesome place. And I really, I just can't wait to see the look on his face and, and the joy and probably some tears and just the sharing of all of this together. One of the first stops is the iconic World War II Memorial. The Guardians are trying to keep focused on their job here. Today is about the World War II vets and it's just, it's a great feeling to see each and every one of them here and enjoying the trip and, and they feel very honored. I feel very honored to be with them, to be a Guardian. The Freedom Wall represents so many lost in war. Think of all the, the men and women that have sacrificed and the families that have sacrificed along the way. Very emotional. Um, I'm very thankful for each and every one of them. It's a, it's a total shock to look at that wall and think that that represents 400,000 people that were alive in my day and uh, didn't make it and the people that have survived are very fortunate and we've lived a good life and they wouldn't even have hoped, they wouldn't have dreamed what the life is that we live today. I know I didn't, it's, uh, it's a just a tremendous thing. As guardians on this honor flight, the Gold Star family members who are here as guardians are here with mixed emotions today, celebrating the veterans they are here with while mourning the loss of their own. And with the local tribute here too, it is getting even harder to keep those emotions in check. I know the emotions are starting to build as we work towards the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. not only put that wreath there for your family, but for all the families across our area as they remember their soldier. Yes, I, um, I felt as though we did represent all the Gold Star families, all the war, World War II vets, all the Vietnam vets, Korean vets. It was a high honor. Today I was thinking about Nathan and how proud he would be of me and his mother to make this trip out here and to be a part of the Quad Cities Honor Flight. And then another tribute, much less solemn, but just as heartfelt. <laughs> the welcome home that the QCA gives like no other across this nation. A hero's welcome for the veterans and for the Gold Star families who know their soldiers are right here with them. Yes, it was wonderful. Thank you. Beyond words. <laughs> he would have loved every moment. And you know, knowing Bradley, he's probably up in heaven. He's probably got it all wrapped up and and cheering me on and, and uh, whatever. But he would have been very pleased. I know the hero's welcome was for the veterans on this honor flight, but it's also for your family, for your son, your dad, and your husband. What did it feel like walking through and seeing that and feeling that hero's welcome? It was very gratifying. It was, it was a great honor, you know? Very emotional, very emotional. We really felt like he was there. Annie and I were talking about that. He's here, he's here, he's smiling down, and if we trip, he's laughing. <laughs> lots of tears, lots of laughter, lots of smiles, lots of wonderful memories. God bless America.